Okay, so now what I want to do is just move on to is, where is it? Is walk cycle. And um, the, what, what is a huge help is the edit center feature. And what that is, and it's really simple, and you may even already know about it, but again, it's a basic feature of Flash. I'm just going to blow this up a little bit. Select my um, free transform tool, because the edit center is a sub-selection of that. And you'll notice the edit center point is up here on the upper right. Um, well, I think it might be best to sort of start with a something new, maybe a new file, so I can start from scratch with something like this. In fact, let me just select some things. Bear with me. Sometimes it's just easier to start from scratch to show you. Now I've copied what is three different symbols that make up his leg. And they're all on one layer right now because I just pasted them in there. Um, but if you select them all and right click and then say distribute to layers, it does exactly that. Puts them on different layers for you. Um, Alright, so normally once you create a shape and convert it to a symbol, I'm going to break this up. Here's your shape. I'm going to break this up as well. I'm going to break them all up. You select your shape, hit F8, convert to symbol, and you'll see the registration is by default set to the center. Um, you have a choice to set it anywhere you want, but I leave it in the center for now. The reason is if I set it to the right, or a corner, sorry, any kind of corner here, or any off to the side, let's say, in the event I want to scale it somehow, um, it doesn't, well, it shouldn't. I'm proving myself wrong. Usually what would happen is it, it would scale itself based on the, on the center point of the symbol, inside the symbol. But regardless, for now, it's not that important. What I usually do is just convert it to a symbol, leave the center point in the middle. On the stage, the instance of the symbol, I'll then select the free transform tool the little white dot that is our center point in the middle you can click and drag and I'll place this anywhere I need to where I think it'll hinge uh, with an upper leg symbol like this I'll put it up by the hip um, the lower leg convert to a symbol I'll edit it probably down by the ankle in fact I might push it down a little bit and the sneaker, same thing. Maybe about right here. So that when I go to motion tween these guys, they're already hinged for me. It just makes it easier. As opposed to turning it and then trying to manipulate it or move it. Um, it's just a lot easier. It's the closest that Flash can get to a sort of semi-parent-child linkage relationship that you commonly find in big 3D programs and stuff like that. Uh, so hinging is cool. I love it. I, I I use it all the time. Now the key thing is what you don't want to do when using what you, or I should say what you do want to do is do all your hinging first in the first keyframe right after you create a symbol. Just do it um, because what happens is I'll try to animate this and then move the edit center point later in a different keyframe. If I move it here, I, actually let's keep it exactly where it is, and I apply a. Uh, an emotion tween. I'll show you the, what happens when you do it right. It hinges. Right? Pretty simple. It does what it's supposed to do. If I, whatever, moved the center point, it just, it just blows it apart. So the tween is based on the center point. And if, if you edit it later down the road in a different keyframe, and it, and it does stuff like this, some wacky stuff, you'll know why. So I always make it a point to, uh, as soon as I create that symbol, move that center point where I think I want it, and be done with it. Um, 
and it just helps in the long run. It really works well for um, or everything, arms, hands, wrists, things like that. Um, sometimes often what I'll do is, uh, you know, like I, like I showed you, let me see where his head turns are. This is another cool feature of Flash that I use. Uh, you know, his, what if you wanted to move his whole head based on one center point? Um, that can be done very easily by uh, literally just selecting all and only the objects that create his head, selecting the free transform tool, and then repositioning this. Now, we're already in a file that has all these on different layers and with motion tweens, so we've basically probably blown apart all those tweens. I guess not. That's a good thing. Um, but if you needed to, if you were working, let's say, frame by frame, let me copy this. All I'm going to just do a control C and copy this whole head. I'm going to start a, uh, a new file, sorry. Sometimes I'll work frame by frame. Depends on what I'm doing. Um, if I'm working frame by frame and I have a lot of different assets, and let's say they're, let's make it even harder, they're all in different layers, but I want to rotate them as a whole, just select them all, create more keyframes, another keyframe down the line here. I can turn on onion skin. And move my center point and then move his head as a whole. Just like this. Basically, move the center point down to where it would be attached to his neck. Um, sometimes, frame by frame is more useful or even quicker than a tween for, depends on what you're, what you're doing, but. go. Um, so that's basically how I've done, where's his walk cycle file? Yeah, you'll see, I'll select each individual one. His, actually for this file, for some reason, his, uh, I, I did this a while ago, his foot, the edit center for his foot is down by the bottom, so it rotates like this. But uh, for the most part, you can see on the timeline, both of his, um, all his legs, Everything I did, I did. It's a mixture of frame by frame and motion tween. Sometimes I feel like I just have a little bit more control um, with frame by frame. And especially when it comes to walking. I've done a lot of walking walk cycles before, so this is sort of the result of lots of trial and error. And actually, here's a little trick. You can see at this position the foot bends. This is simply just another symbol. Um, but what I like to do when I, when I have to do something like that to keep uh, the new symbol the same as the old, I'm going to just swap this back to the original foot. That was the original foot when I was animating. And it didn't look like he had enough weight. It just didn't work for me visually when his foot got to that position. Um, call me a stickler. So what I did was select it, right click over it if you're in Windows. It was a command click in Mac. And I'll say duplicate, duplicate symbol. I'll go into it. Now I have, now this is a new symbol here. And that, that's the reason why I'll also choose frame by frame sometimes because if I know I'm, I'm going to be, if I want to have two or three or more different symbols on the same layer, I'll just do frame by frame. Um, and here's where I'll just uh, kind of chop this off by selecting it. Just want to flatten that to make it look like the foot bent under his own weight. Grab the um, rectangle tool and some black. And again, this is all basic shapes. I have not picked up my stylus at all. Um, and maybe even, you know, push and pull and tweak some of this stuff around. Whatever. It's your call. And let me zoom back out, and you can see it looks like he's. It just gives him more fluidity, makes him look less like uh, a tweened flash animation. Looks a little bit more, even, you know, a little bit more broadcast ready 
type of thing as opposed to web ready but yet again this is totally acceptable for the web because like I said the file sizes are just so tiny uh, speaking of walk cycles um, the best way to do it is to animate your walk cycles in a symbol into its own symbol whether it be a movie clip or a graphic symbol um, I get a lot of questions on how do you make them walk across the screen because a lot of people will, will start off doing them on the main timeline and then they can't figure out how to move all those keyframes and reposition the character each way to make them go from point A to point B. The easiest method and, uh, is to just place it in a movie clip or like I said a graphic symbol uh, with just the amount of frames you need. In fact, you know, why, why don't I just show you. Here's his walk. Let me zoom back out. And then you take an instance of that symbol and you, tr you drag an instance to the main stage and then you tween that symbol across the stage from point A to point B. Um, so we're actually already in a symbol. You can see up here we're in a movie clip. Uh, I'm going to go back to scene one. I actually have a... Um, let me actually just play this. I'm going to test this movie for you. Hopefully it won't be too jerky. That shadow of him is really just another instance of him, of his walk cycle, skewed with the free transform tool and given a tint of just gray, 100% tint. Um, so I'm reuse that that shadow is just reusing him. There's no new assets. Uh, but what I want to do, I'm gonna just shut it off for a second. Let's uh, make him a lot smaller. I'm gonna move him off the side here. Let's make him just walk from left to right. I'm going to create a keyframe. Let's say at 50. Doesn't matter for now. We can always edit that that keyframe position later. Uh, while I have that keyframe selected, I'm just going to pull him with the arrow key. If you hold down shift and use the arrow key, it jumps, I think it's 10 pixels at a time instead of one. So it's kind of, if you hold it down, it's just, uh, it's a lot faster. Okay, I got him basically off the stage. I'm going to right click anywhere in between these two frames and just select create motion tween. Uh, so now he'll pan, but since he is a movie clip, we're not going to see the animation inside while inside of the flash authoring environment. So we're just going to test the movie. And that's how you make a character walk across the screen. Um, you can see his foot slides a little bit. If that's the case, if you get that sort of forward moonwalky kind of thing going, what I do is, what you want to do is just insert frames, make the distance between the two keyframes longer so that um, he doesn't travel across the stage as quickly and what I usually do is just click and drag and select a section hit F5 you can see the um, the end keyframe just get pushed down and test again again it's a little bit of trial and error but this one's not so bad I'm going to test it again so you get the idea Now, um, you know, like I said in the very beginning, you could, you know, I, I commonly draw with the brush tool as well with the pressure sensitivity on. Um, it ends up creating more points. You know, I optimize as much as possible. But, I, for again, form follows function. In this character, I kind of want him to be basic, simple shapes, very graphic oriented. And, um, and it was more or less the look I was going for, just very simple. And so I usually start off simple in that way. And I, and I could have used the line tool. Um, it's really just a matter of preference and that's the great thing about Flash is that you can create the same things in so many different ways like you know skinning a cat as they say so that's that everyone has a slightly different way of working